Well, hello out there, faithful podcast listeners. We are Convincing Idiots, and this is episode 183, and you are in for a fantastic episode. We have so much to tell you. Brian does Boston. Oprah does drugs. Influencers are trying to tell women how to date. TikTok might be getting banned. And if that wasn't enough for our final segment, we are going to be talking about our personal Mount Rushmore's of movie posters that's right so you're gonna want to stick around all the way till the end i've said enough we've got so much to explain to you so without further ado let's start the show you guys enjoy your whatever that is all right test 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 call it again convincing idiots convincing idiots called it ham gravy (laughs) <laughs> I informed them that I sided with the stat man, not just anyone's opinion, the stat man Brian Fisher. These kids today, uh, Jingle All the Way is in fact the best Christmas movie of all time. I need to get grandma a present <laughs> and my herpes is flaring up. <laughs> I got it. Mm-hmm. Yo, yo, yo. I'm the millennial We're Santa. Three friends representing three different generations. That's our whole shtick. That's our thing. Mm hmm. Nick got the whole poop. Mm-hmm. I'm standing oh, in the hey, sea Jim. breeze, <laughs> holding <laughs> a turd, just mightily. I'm just going in hats. <laughs> anyway, on a lighter note, uh, the podcast. Welcome to the vodcast. Welcome to the broadcast, boys and girls. Welcome to the show. This is convincing idiots. My name's Dean, the Zennial. I'm Brian Genix. And hello out there. I'm a millennial, and my name is Nick. And this is Convincing Idiots, a weekly podcast of three friends representing three different generations. We get together here just about each and every week to discuss all things nerd and pop culture. So if you are interested in those topics, well, then you found just the right place to be. Uh, If you want to find just the right place to be on the Internet, well, you can look us up there as well. You can find us on all your favorite social media accounts. We are uh, available on the vast majority of them. All you have to do is is go to Google and type in Convincing Idiots Linktree, L-I-N-K-P-R-E-E, and there you will see laid out before you, uh, very organized, very nicely, are links to each and every one of our social media accounts. You can find that information and oh so much more on our website, which is convincingidiots.wordpress.com. Uh, you'll find, like I said, all that and even more. There's also a merch store you will find on our link tree or our website in which you can get yourself some sweet Convincing Idiots merch to put on your buddy. Uh, and there is also uh, links to where you can subscribe uh, to and download this podcast each and every week to hear these three angelic voices in which That's right. we are about to take you on an adventure with this evening. So, Dean, since you're uh, piping up there, mm-hmm. how have you been, my good sir, in the in the last week that has passed? Mm, I I've been splendid. We did St. Patrick's Day. Um, mm-hmm. That Monday, I uh, took my first PTO day of the year, so you know, it tells you how well St. Patrick's Day went. We we went did nice. eggs and eggs around eight. Started at PJ Marley's, and then just kind of hopped around. Ended. Um, back in Wadsworth, um, I think we did, uh, yeah, it, we, we did Crafty Cocktail and then. Oh, my God. Had a late dinner at, uh, at McDonald's. Uh, no, the Galaxy, actually. <laughs> okay. No, oh, geez. So I went from 8 a.m. to got home by 11 p.m. Mm. That is a shift. Hey, you're going to, you go big or go home, right? That's right. But no, it, it was a fun time. Jeff was out there with us, uh, Megan and Lynn and Mike. Uh, everybody had a good time. Everybody uh, stayed responsible and and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was it was quite the uh, quite the day. Nice. 
Uh, other than that, you know, just living, working, and fucking. That's all you can do. Nikolai, what about you? I know Brian's got a, a, a special. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Brian's got many adventures us, right? to, to so, tell us so about. Yeah. You tell us about your home, home life and. And yeah, then Brian will, also, <laughs> will, will share with us his glorious adventures. Yeah, I had a nice weekend. Also, did a little St. Patrick's Day festivities. Went out for kegs and eggs. Which anytime you can have beer and eggs, it's just it's, it it's is. A, you can't pass it up. It is a non. What did you have with your eggs? So. What, what kind of beer did you have? With uh, I got. I got. Oh, what kind of beer? Yeah, when you say cakes and eggs, you did... Oh, yeah, yeah. Just the standard. I go standard Molson, like a standard light okay. beer. I don't want anything with a, too much... I don't want craft beer with, with, with breakfast. I didn't get like, I, I don't want that. I like the thickness okay. with, the, yeah. uh, with the, the scotch eggs and such. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like to keep it light. I do the scrambled eggs and the ham and the potatoes and the beer. And mm-hmm. It's just Where'd a nice... Nice little. Uh, we went to Finney's actually, uh, the one on Manchester Road there. Oh uh, yeah. Met up with okay. uh, nice. family and friends there. So nice. uh, it was cool. That was the first time I've been to that one. We go to the the Norton one. Actually, we went to the Norton one on Friday night for dinner. Um, but we frequent that one uh, a bit. So I have not been to the new one yet. It's fine. It's it's yeah. not as nice as the Norton location, but it's fine. It's a ni- it's it's nice little bar. Definitely a lot nicer than what it was prior oh, yeah. uh, past yes. few ownerships. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was cool. And then uh, went to the Monsters game. Uh, on St. Patrick's Day as well, um, which was a fantastic game. Uh, they tied it up, and within the last couple minutes of the game, went to overtime and won it there. So the luck of the Irish was on their side. It was a good game, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, through, uh, today, I stopped by, uh, took a took a little uh, professional visit to one of our sponsors. Went and saw the new tattoo shop. Uh, oh, Scotty oh, and nice. Greg that's are right. Yeah, he he texted me up today. So the other day told me they yeah. were open. Yep, so stopped out there and paid them a visit and popped over to Wadsworth Brewing Company and stuff. So it was nice. It was a good good little day. Uh, the shop looks incredible. Um, I know we've hinted yeah. about it already on the show. Did, our, you, go, did you go over there it, after or before I texted you that I was going to go head out somewhere? What? When I texted the, in the, the group, I said, I said, you know, Brighton. Oh, yeah. No, I was already out there. Yeah, okay. I was yeah. already out so there. So you didn't want to say, hey, we're... I'm here. You should no. Okay. You said you were going to get stamps or whatever, so I I figured it was a stamp trip mm. thing. I don't know. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's nice, nice nice place. So like I said, we've talked before that they would be moving. Uh, so they do have a new location not far from where they were already. So um, well, once the everything gets all updated, I'm sure that'll all be worked in the ad reads. But Golden Heart mm-hmm. Tattoo has has moved to Wadsworth. Uh, if whether or not that's the name that they stay or not, but uh, the the fine talents of Greg Pramick and Scotty Oswald have moved their talents to Wadsworth. So, but yeah, shop looks incredible. They're just putting some finishing touches on it. Passed the health inspection the other day, so coming along quite nicely. Very nice. Very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Scott texted me uh, Tuesday when we we're driving home, a couple pictures, and said yeah. to stop out. I said, I, you know, we were in the car heading home, but couldn't do it. But yeah, yeah. Cool. Nice. Good. Good so, Good where were you that you couldn't go over there? What did you do, Brian? Well, we had a fun trip. So, we, uh, me and a few friends went up to uh, Boston, Massachusetts for St. Patrick's Day weekend. We left for last Friday and went to stayed overnight in Albany, New York. So, that's the, you know, some people know, some people don't. I guess it's the capital of New York. So, that was. Uh, that was actually very nice. We, st- we That's stayed always a surprise a... to me. Every time I hear it, it doesn't seem right. That Albany is nice? That Albany is the, the capital of New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's always York odd. City, but yeah. yeah. It's, it was, it's a nice town. We stayed in a nice hotel and uh, stopped at a couple places, an old English bar and then another couple spots here. And just it was a nice, fun kickoff evening. And then Saturday, we drove up into uh, Boston toward the Sam Adams uh, brewery that That's evening. Fun, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um all my friends have been there and done all that before. So they went through it again with so that was it was a nice I, I'd never been to Boston ever, so it was a nice new experience. Everything that we did was uh, new to me. Um yeah just went around a few spots Saturday and, and had a pretty pretty good day. And then we stayed over top of a a bar uh in just outside of Boston, in Charleston, I think it was Charleston is where it was. So, um, and we went down there in that evening. So, nice guys. It was cool. Did so you guys? Go ahead. Did you walk everywhere from where you were? Like, was it? Were you walking distance of things? Like to? 
hop around? What we, uh, what we did on St. Patrick's Day is the they figured out that there's a, a train station, uh, like you know, subway type cars, you know, so it, uh, that's within walking distance. So we walked up there. They got passes to ride the train into town. We wound up taking uh, Uber back because we just we didn't want to navigate coming home. We just kind of were over it by the, t- the end of the day and all that. But uh, yeah. yeah, we figured out the trains and had a, had a good time. Um, but yeah, the, we stayed over top of the bar. It was cool. So uh, hung out late Friday. It was the tavern at the end of the world or something like that. Is was is where we stayed. So great guys. You know the the, the partners there. Great host. The place was pretty cool and comfortable. Um, I mean, you're sitting over top of a busy bar, so you're going to hear some noise and this and that. But it was it was fine. By the time we went to bed, everything didn't bother us. And then uh, Saturday, we went you know, on. Excuse me, Sunday, we went into South Boston for the St. Patrick's Day parade festivities. Um, don't ever need to do that again. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Never need to do that again. What we were so we we got there, and it was it was fine. I mean, it was it was neighborhoody people having it was normal stuff as you would expect to see. We try to go to brunch, to go into a restaurant, okay, to go in and sit down and eat was a minimum twenty dollar cash cover per person to walk in there. Okay, wow. So we're like, that's uh, okay. We wound up just like, hey, we're here. We're starving. We're going to sit down and eat. <clears throat> Paid, went in. It was a nice place. Cabo. It was like a very nice Italian uh, restaurant up there. Yeah, it was a nice bar and, and restaurant. It was <laughs> some, a pretty some big little, place. Some little place, a family-owned joint called Carrabba's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, it, it had steak and eggs. It was, it was very good. So it was a nice start to the day. Chill crowd, fest, you know, festive people, but nothing crazy. And they had windows in the front. So we, we went up over to get some spots to watch the parade from the window. Okay, but we couldn't hear anything. And as we're sitting there, it starts to fill up. It starts to fill up. Uh, parade started at like one o'clock in the afternoon. So we'd been there for a couple hours by now, right? Just kind of hanging out, very chill. And we're watching all these people go by and all these people are just walking by with just 12 packs, 12 packs, gallon jugs of whatever the hell they're carrying. Boston police are out there, right? But it's too, it's too big. There's, they, there's too many people that they, you can't enforce public drinking unless you're a real idiot, basically. So we really didn't get an idea how big this thing was until we went outside finally and watched some of the parade out there and decided we were going to walk down the main sidewalk as the parade was coming toward us to try to walk out. And our our plan was to head to Harpoon Brewery in Boston and head over that way. Man, that that's we started walking against the you know to the it it was an absolute shit show. Way too many people. Way too many drunk, underage, or very young kids, right? Did everybody sound like they were from Boston, too? I love, love the accent. That was a, <laughs> definitely a highlight. That was a consistent highlight. With the, the, the authentic Boston accent is fantastic. And and the you know the average person there, very friendly, very hospitable, you know, and all that stuff. It just it was way too many kids. And I uh, reading article the next day, they had... More and more people in that area are compl- are complaining about it just becoming more and more of a problem there for the locals. They trash everything. They said it was like about a million people they anticipated went down to that Good area Lord. for the parade. Like a million. Get your head around that. A million a lot of fucking fun. people. Yeah. yeah. A lot of arrests, violence, damage, this, that, and the other. So, you yeah, know, the parade itself was okay. What we, a lot of titty meat out. A lot of titty meat out. I, there's definitely a lot of beautiful women in Boston. I'll, let's, let's say that, you know. So, anyway, and then we went into, we went into town, and uh, the brewery was very nice. Harpoon Brewery was cool, and then we went to a couple other Irish bars, and even they were twenty bucks in town to spend. So we didn't want to spend twenty bucks to walk in and have no. a beer and leave. It just, it's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it, in retrospect, you know, Jim pointed out, my buddy, that I'm. 
I'm sure there's they're charging money like that to keep a lot of the riffraff right. out of there and cut down yeah. the crowd well, because kept, the average kid kept, you got your like riffraff out. Bucks. Well, sure. <laughs> riffraff you know? and cheap ass, mm-hmm. not in here. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Sunday, you know, then we wound up spending some time downstairs a little bit. So it, overall, it was it was fun. To, like I said, but we don't need to do that again. Monday uh, was was fantastic. We went we went on a sightseeing tour. Uh, again, took the train into the town again. Did the Freedom Trail? You know, was, we did a lot of the Freedom Trail, and just really took in the history. And um, that's the coolest part. My buddy Jim, so, yeah, Annie and Annie and B, man, they really did a great job of planning where to go. It, and it, again, by then, you know, St. Patrick's festivities are are past. There's a few people like us out and around wearing the green, still kind of celebrating stuff like that. But it was more just normal. No covers, normal stuff. We saw the Cheers bar, Dean. You know, yeah. I sent you guys a picture of that, where the mm-hmm. uh, where the, where the uh, TV show was based on. They shot the uh, the footage uh, outside the bar and everything. And again, just the history of Boston is just. We went to a grave site in the middle of town. In this grave site, there's the graves right there. Headstone, mm-hmm. Sam Adams, mm-hmm. Paul Revere. I got pictures of those guys. Benjamin Franklin's parents. And John Hancock, all in the same cemetery. It's like, God, wow, damn, you know. So that oh, it's just very powerful. And then we wound up. The last thing we saw was the Bunker Hill Memorial. Did at you go night. up? We did not go up. It was, uh, it was closed by the time we got there. I didn't know you could go up in there. Yeah. But uh, we got to see the city lights out over the hill and everything. Man, that was just really. It makes you reflect on what the what those folks went through to. Uh, you know, fight for independence and everything. Did you go into so, any of the churches? We didn't. We went into there's the one that's over by the Boston Library, but that library that was incredible right. in itself. God, the architecture, the history, just really amazing. I think it was the old South Church we went into. I think, but yeah, anyways, yeah. So, highly recommend if you've never been to Boston, go check it out for the history and the. There's definitely some fun places to check out. And again, the locals are very nice, uh, but you do not need to go into St. Patrick's Day Parade in South Boston unless they really get it under control. To be honest with you, and again, it's not the locals' fault. It's just it's just way too many people overrunning it. So they're going to wind up probably you know they're going to shut the whole thing down or move it downtown or something where they can have more control over it if they're not uh, if they're not careful. So that's it. Great trip. Very rewarding. Thanks. And uh, a lot of fun. So I want to do that. What you said about somebody did a good right. job of. Uh, I was like, I want to do that. I want to take a trip with someone to somewhere I've never been and let them yeah. plan where we go. That's, I'm just content with just going where you take me. Tell you exactly what, right. <laughs> a couple of pit we, stops, we, maybe some breweries on. on the way, some cool stuff. I don't yep. care. But like you, you do it. I'm I'm content to just be along for the ride. That's fine. That's exactly what I did. What I, do you want to see? So I, I, if it works in the plan, I want to see the Cheers Bar just because of the. Yep. It, it was right on the right on the way outside the. Did you make it to the uh, oldest uh, 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 restaurant? The oyster yeah. place. Yep. Union Oyster. Yep. Yes, I sat uh, I, for the very. I, I could not recall ever eating oysters like that. Really, I had the the, the, down the, with, uh, the the soup or whatever it was. The clam chowder. Yeah. Yeah. But we sat at the little oyster bar. The guy shut the oysters right there, yep. and I'm like, okay. And it was actually very good, very good. <laughs> yeah, one thing so, that it, it, the it, oldest it, restaurant uh, in, in, in North, North America, America. Or, yeah, the yeah. oldest in continuously an, okay. running restaurant in, in America. In America. It was the really? Union wow. Oyster in in Boston. There, yeah, <laughs> pretty cool place. Um, one of one of the uh, cooler things, uh, if you ever get back there, about a half an hour uh, down the highway, is um, is Salem. Mm. That 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 if you like the historical stuff and the uh the old sure. buildings and the and the and the cemeteries, Salem was really cool too. Yeah, the girls are planning like maybe a you know talking like a girl trip there or something like that. So yeah, that would be interesting for sure. There you go. So great a great few days nice. and uh, glad you made it back great, great safely. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so we've all been busy with uh, festivities and all that. I don't know if anybody saw anything new. You want to recommend any, any idiot reviews? Uh, Dean, you have something to go right ahead. Um, I actually followed your guys' recommendation, and we did watch mm-hmm. Ricky Stenicki, uh last oh, night. Yeah. That was that was super. It 
it was one of the funniest, dumbest movies. <laughs> like, the mm, premise yeah. is insane. And then I saw sure. one of the producers, one of the Farley brothers. I'm like, okay, th- that that makes that makes sense. No, it was really funny. I, I enjoyed you guys write the the musical numbers in it <laughs> were fantastic. Yeah. Um, after that was done, we watched uh, Jim McAffigan's uh, stand up, Dark Pale. Mm-hmm. You're a fan of Jim Gaffigan, it, uh, I recommend that. I kind of forgot mm-hmm. about him to be honest. Yeah. Like I, he's he had a really big moment, like I don't know, seven to ten years ago, where he was a re- and uh, he just kind of I don't hear much about yeah, him anymore. I kinda, it anymore. Kind of it, it, it was as funny as all his other stuff is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and that was, like was that. also on uh, I, what did, whatever the Nikki thing was on uh, Prime. Prime would have been yeah. Amazon Prime or whatever. Yeah, mm. um, I finished Dead to Me. Um, ah, ah, uh, mm. yeah. Um, did you cry? How hard did you cry? I, I, I mean, I felt the emotions. I don't. I didn't really cry because I also don't. There's a part of me. I mean, it's been over for a couple years, right? We can talk about it. Yeah. There's a part of me that doesn't believe he's dead. Hmm. I don't know. I, a part of me thinks that uh, that uh, you know she's kind of a con artist, a real nice girl, sweet right. as an angel, but kind of a con artist. I don't know. Um, yeah. I just I didn't. It was it was sad the way they did. It, it was good the way they did it, but I I don't know. It, maybe that thinking that stopped me from kind of really vesting emotionally in it. Gotcha. Uh, I, so I'd seen that episode, like I'd watched that not too long after I'd lost a friend to cancer and I was fucking shook mm-hmm. for the rest of the day after watching that last episode. I was like, uh, Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fucking it's sad. Yeah, it's, yeah. And then I also, um, we just watched, uh, from DVR day. If you're not watching the TV show ghosts on CBS, you're missing something. It's it's really really funny. I mean, I, I find myself like laughing out loud. It's rare to find you know to, at like a network TV show <laughs> comedy to 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 laugh out loud. But I I I do every time. Huge fan of that show. So other than that, guys, that's uh, that's all I've watched. Very good. Nick, anybody else? Uh, I recently uh, th- this week just actually the other night started watching. Um, uh, the dark side of comedy uh, on from Vice. Uh, hmm. So it's, if you're if you're familiar with the dark side of the ring, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. Each episode is on a famous comedian or somebody Ooh, in the comedy good. scene. So uh, I watched the the first episode was on Chris Farley. Uh, watched one on Roseanne and watched one on uh, Artie Lang. Uh, Ooh, that, and just be good. fucking yeah, they they're it's a really incredible show. It's really heartbreaking. I mean, obviously, you have a Mitch you know, episode, you know. No, I looked because mm. I was like, that would be the one. That's the but one. Like, they don't, not yet. There's only, um, I think there's just the one season so oh, okay. far. So I think it's relatively newer. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's definitely a great show. Uh, Vice does a great job with everything that they touch. But, um, I would say honestly, like, um, they're all, even like, you know, with like Roseanne and stuff, like they do a really good job of, the, the way they tell these stories of these characters of, the, of these of these people, it, it does make you you can't help but feel sad for each and every one sure. of them. Sure, um, Artie Lang might might have been the most mm. uh, tough for me to watch. It was just sad. He's still alive. Um, I yeah. Well, so I looked it up because Robin's like he died, right? And I was like, I thought mm. we talked about it on the show. I was like, I think maybe he did. I feel like maybe we talked about it. <laughs> and I looked it up and I said, I'll be goddamn no, he's unrecognizable. Um, sure. His his nose. I don't know if you guys know what happened with his nose or whatever. He Mm-mm. broke up some some coke with uh, some uh-huh. busted glass, and he snorted the glass oh, and all. And his God. his nose is just flat and fun. like it's kind of odd. I kind of forgot. I always knew him or knew of him. I'm not a Howard Stern fan. I, I mean, yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of Howard Stern, uh, yeah. but I remember him from that. Right. I did not. Mm-hmm. When I'm watching this, I'm like, I didn't realize he was on Mad TV. And mm-hmm. then when they start yeah. showing the clips, I'm like, oh. No, I totally remember him. I just never put two and two right. together that, you know, that that was him. Very sad. Very sad. Just a really like the type of guy that you would root for. Just seemed like a really sweet guy. Yeah. That just 
it spiraled so terribly the whole hollywood thing and it just it just you know and the stern shit and all that it just yeah it was yeah really sad but uh anyway that is a fantastic show dark okay. side of comedy is very very good um i see that there's one there is one on uh andrew dice clay we didn't make it too far <laughs> into that episode it was just like jesus christ like you can only watch so much of it under today's you know, lens before you're just like, I can't fucking listen to this fucking guy anymore. But um, the, I think the second episode is on Andrew Dice Clay. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to go re- back and rewatch it because Rob's like, I can't with this fucking guy. I can't. Just, you know? <laughs> so we skipped to the Roseanne episode, but uh, I'm going to go back and watch that one as well. Um, but uh, definitely uh, incredible show. Other than that, um, just still been plugging away at Seinfeld, watching nice. hockey. Those are my, uh, my, my two happy places right now. So that, that's about it. That's the new thing for me. So, Brian, what have you been seeing other than uh, the bottom of beer glasses in Boston? Yeah. Uh, just working through a couple shows here, guys. So I've mentioned Shogun before on mm-hmm. Hulu. Just phenomenal. Just, just start watching it right now. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. Again, and, yet, and it's not as shows, like I said before, you can sit and just sort of have it in the background because there's subtitles. Right. But again, it's just... just beautifully shot and costumes and the culture it's just amazing so definitely check that out for sure highly recommend it i think it's six or six episodes through something like that so they're releasing them i said it incorrectly originally i thought they all dropped at the same time but they did not so it's once a week they just show you and then they release them on hulu past the day of the week i think it's like tuesday or wednesday that it's opened up for you to be able to watch. So it's only one episode per week that you have access to. And I'm working through uh, Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. So again, as I mentioned this before too, it's the story of Rick Grimes and Michonne, them reuniting and all that. Just again, there's four episodes released uh, now so you, far. Hold on, you keep saying that. What What is the girl's name? Michonne. Miss Shome or Michonne? Michonne is her name. Michonne is her Michonne first name. Is her, okay. Michonne. Yeah. Michonne. Okay. Yep. So just, just again, very, very good. Well acted. Good storyline. Very intriguing. All that stuff. If you're a Walking Dead the fan, uh, definitely check that out. That's on AMC uh, or AMC Plus on streaming. You can find that. That's it. Just working with those couple, those couple shows right now. No other movies or anything uh, yet. So nice. There you go. Yep. Um, okay, guys. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break here, and uh, then we'll come back with uh, pop culture headlines and our ask an idiot segment this week. Woo-hoo! And then yes, yeah, so we're gonna do our main topic later. Uh, art related will be our main topic later on this evening. What are we talking about? You'll just have to keep on listening. And come back after the break. What is the coolest painting you've ever made in your own feces on a gas station bathroom wall? Oh, that's easy. Could be. Art. Yeah. Could be. Serious. All right, welcome back to Convincing Idiots. Thank you for having us. Yes. Glad to be Segment here. Segment two. Mm-hmm. Very glad. Segment two. Extra shout out to Boston. Boston. Our friends in Boston. 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 Yeah. Uh, I didn't mention this, by the way. The, sort of the, the, when we were going into town on St. Patrick's Day, the first time we're trying to get on the on the train, right? Some lady is. Oh, I like this story. Some lady is yelling, I'm desperate for a you know, ride. Don't oh, stop no. the train! Stop the train! Don't start the train! And we're thinking that she has maybe a kid that's stuck in there or yeah. something like that between the doors, and she's just like panicking, you know. And uh, uh, she kind of shoes her kids away, and we go up there, 
And here, the next reason she stopped the train, right next to them is a couple meth heads, and the one guy had tripped or something like that, and it was sort of stuck in between the where the door oh, no. was shut on him. Yeah, so basically, it was just a total, yeah. Sounds not a delightful. great start of the day. Sounds yeah. like a beautiful city. No. I can't wait yeah. to visit. Uh-huh. <laughs> Our buddies went over there and tried to help him get on the train so they can shut the door and keep moving. And yeah, the lady just said along something along the lines in a very authentic Boston accent to uh, just go have a fucking nice St. Patrick's Day or something like that. And then Stop we just the said, fucking okay. train. He's dying yeah. in it. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah. There you go. Sort of a prelude to how the afternoon went a little bit there sure. anyway. Yeah. Hey, Brian, who's on your shirt? Is that Sunny and Scare? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, basically. Yes, one of our shirts on the on the side just messing around with uh, you know, various. I hate it. Just, yeah. <laughs> you, you I hate love that. It. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what it is, it's the old Sunny like and Scare. just did there. Like it's the Sunny and Scare logo from the TV variety show, and I put skulls on it instead. Of, why? I don't know. I just was playing around. I thought it looked cool and uh, put our logo on it, put it out there on the, on the shirt site. So you can find this out there at our Tee Public uh, store. Yes. Go, check, go check that out. I'll give Brian if you $5 if you can tell us what uh, 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 Nick and I were just talking about. What's All right, that? keeping my money. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had your chance. Moving on. Yep, that's it. <laughs> okay, so some social media uh, questions. So, uh, questions. Excuse me. News in pop culture headlines. You, you could ask them in the form there. of question, like Jeopardy. Sure, that's right. So the uh, many are concerned about a potential upcoming. TikTok ban. I don't know if you if you've seen this in the news recently here. So, uh, just passed a house, the house, a house bill, excuse me, in the U.S. to potentially ban TikTok if the company does not sell its uh, Chinese owners. So they want the Chinese ownership to sell off its portion of it because the government says it's concerned about the U.S. citizen data getting overseas and being used inappropriately. So Daily Show made a joke uh, the other day. That it was quite appropriate. They said, well, it's fine that they want the, the government now wants, uh, they don't want the Chinese uh, company to steal our secrets. They want a U.S. company to steal all of our Correct. Uh, secrets. Yes. Right. Yeah, so I don't know, but it has a lot of creators on TikTok that make money creating videos with high traffic and you know businesses advertise there so it's used by a lot of people to make money other than just putting you know random you know videos out there so there's a lot of creators that are getting a little bit nervous uh some are starting to uh, at least have a larger presence on other platforms as well like youtube shorts and reels on meta which you know instagram or facebook both in other other areas as well. So hasn't happened yet. I don't know that it would get through the Senate, frankly, not sure. Um it's but going just to. you think so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, Why do you think so? This, is, what do you this think might about be one of the the one thing right now that the people in Washington can get behind together mm-hmm. is this ban. Um it's they they chalk it up national security, but I mean I don't know. To me, I don't think that you need to go ahead and ban it. I think you could regulate so many things in this country. Why can't you put some sort of regulation on media companies in a whole about uh, what they can collect and what they can glom or gleam off of different uh, people's phones or uh, sure. social media accounts? The banning seems like. I mean, there is a free speech element to this. That correct. But again, they're not really they're they're not out there to ban the free speech. They're not out there saying per se, don't say this, don't say it. That's not the point. So mm-hmm. I, I I understand both people's side. I understand the, the TikTokers and you know the people that's making money legitimately off of this. Um, I understand that, but I also understand that you know the security risk that this may uh cause it. I mean they they have more data and intel than we do so we don't know exactly what they see that made them 
jumps, you know, so fast and so hard on this. So I, I don't. I'm talking about both sides because I, I don't actually have a an opinion on both sides. I, I understand both sides. So I'm not on TikTok. I don't use TikTok. I don't watch TikTok. So I don't have a, a, a fight, you know, I don't have a, a bear in the fight here. That's definitely not the, the, the terminology for that. A bear in the fight, yeah. A man. bear in the fight. It is now. You know what? Fuck it. I'm bringing it in. I have a bear I don't in have the a fight. bear in that fight. Cause, <laughs> what, there's, I, I watch a lot of bear. Primarily because it's a dog fight and you wouldn't have a bear mm-hmm. in it, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't have a bear in the fight, so I don't personally don't care. But I do understand both sides. What do you guys think? Do you guys have a bear in the fight? Uh, Nick, I don't. Ha- I don't have a bear. I mean, I enjoy TikTok. I am. Uh, I am uh, a consumer of TikTok. I do not post anything or create any content on TikTok myself. Um, I don't, I, I keep hearing stuff about TikTok and it's like, I don't know if I just don't know enough about like the ins and outs of this or what the big concern is. I don't really understand. I don't see what the big deal is. Um, yeah, the data and all that. Stuff, I don't know what all of this stuff. I mean, we're any, any form of social media that you're using, you're signing over your privacy to them. If you anyway. own a phone, it's, it's the you don't even get on an app for, I guess, shit. yeah, the entertainment mm-hmm. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel this when it. Every time this story comes up, it hits my ears like people. It's like old people being afraid of just things that they don't know. Like I don't know what it is, and I don't know how it works, and I don't know. I'm just worried about it. Like, and that that could just be me not understanding fully the situation. I just I don't really see what the big deal is. It seems. It seems like a silly thing to to ban TikTok to me, um, but well, you felt that way about um, omelets too, Nick. That you don't f- fully understand how they work and, right, and it's what's just in magic. them and, and it's how just magic. Yeah, they're made. Yeah, and you're very frightened of them. So it's, how do you get how do you get so thing. many different food together all in one uh, like that? <laughs> and how does well, you're I've gonna, drawn you the diagram before. I'll, you're gonna we'll talk try, about it You're gonna try to tell me that the egg literally changes form like that, like well, it turns from this from this uh, liquid uh, blob thing into this, uh, this, this yellow casing, the solid. Of, it, it doesn't okay, make any sense. Like I describe it, Nick. You know how you know how this. when I come on your hand. Yes, and at first it's liquid, but then it dries up, and and you have fun peeling it off like that glue. Kind of the same thing. Your little homemade potato chips, as you like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> Brian, would an adult like to enter the chat? What do you think about the TikTok hey, what, thing? What we're we talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. There's 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 something too that you know if if they are finding that okay, there there's a definitive risk in. You know, data getting overseas and being used inappropriately. Okay, it all seems like speculation right now. And again, there's there's something to say too that when you sign up for these fucking things, there are disclosures. You got to pay attention. And if you don't want to, you know, have the risk of your of data being sold or whatever, then you might have to miss out on, on some it. Mr. Beast videos. But you that's get right. Get no, that's I why I'm not deal that. because like I I can't remember my password or whatever um so when i try to log back in it um it asked me like again i can't remember the exact question but it's too personal for me to like want to answer so i've never uh got back on so I, that's why i'm i don't have the app I, again we've had this discussion before brian i will next time we're together i will show mm-hmm. you what i mean i'll try i'll download the the app again and i'll try to log yeah. on and i'll show you what it says too personal Okay. Yeah. It, so it, the question after, it prompts you with is too personal for you to you don't feel comfortable answering it. Yeah. Hmm. So okay. I just don't. Uh, I don't. I, I can't keep on on TikTok. Anytime somebody sends me a video, I can't watch them. Hmm. Okay. So, so you right. know the answer. You just won't give it up. Is that Correct. what it is? Correct. So what is your social security number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't yeah. think it was. Yeah, it's what that the fuck personal. is that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Well, again, I'll show you one next time. How together. old were you when you first let the dog lick you in places yeah. that you weren't supposed to? Like, what is the what is the question? I mean, yeah. I know that answer because <laughs> on video. No, I don't. <laughs> why? Why do you use humor to hide your true emotions? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> If I knew the answer to that, <laughs> God damn! Oh, You're deep TikTok. I don't feel comfortable with that. 
I might log into this fucking app. I end up, God dang. I end up weeping wow. every time they ask the questions. I just, I, it hurts deep down inside. Because I've never felt like enough. Congratulations, you're in. Ding. Yeah. Hey, guys, Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah. Make us get up to Mr. Giddiot's uh, TikTok page, which we are on. Absolutely, yeah. There you have it. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You ask these questions, Brian. You, We're gonna shoot that. I, 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 I want to shoot you. I want to film you. you Jesus! And, I wouldn't yeah, you pulling up that question. Yeah, I should shoot it. Yeah, but, yeah. I want to. I want to see these reaction to the question. Much because Brian, my friend, says he wants to kill me. <laughs> but he was not happy about me shooting on Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you talk about jizz in Nick's hands, I want to shoot you. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Uh Oprah Winfrey Next. is making Easy some segue. news here, guys. Hey, yes. Head Oprah. Yep. Right in there. How do you get from tummy in hand to Oprah? Let's do this. Well, you get some jizz. You get some jizz. You get some jizz. Sure. You get some jizz. You all get some jizz. Well, some may use that as maybe a form of, of weight loss technique. I don't know. So Oprah I as much as he gets off his hand. Sure. I can uh, get a lot out. Sisters <laughs> <laughs> that you, of Dean's family members that we gained last week by his father being on Here are gone is. already. They're, they're gone. <laughs> Lost them. They're gone. So Oprah is making some news now by you know, she's she's lost a lot of weight. I've uh, seen her recently, but looks looks terrific. Okay. Uh, she Unloading. was on the board okay. recently of Weight Watchers, and then she lost weight, and then she came out and um, they got nothing you know, to watch now. I don't want to nah, say admitted it, but she she is taking Ozempic, right? So mm -hmm. she brought that on. She resigned from the board and sort of you know backed away. She, she's not trying to say that you know she's on Weight Watchers and that's why she lost all this weight. I mean, she's talking very openly about this that that. Everything she had tried, she struggled with, and this is something that worked for her. Uh, Ozempic is a; it's normally used to treat other conditions. So, uh, it's I like diabetes or something like that. I think that is correct. Yeah. Yes, and they found that it also <laughs> it. helps. So, thank you. It helps suppress uh, your appetite. So, I think what it does, I think it slows down your digestive system. I think what it does. So that when you eat, you're not digesting as quickly and you feel fuller longer. So you're mm. taking in less, and then that's how you start to lose weight. So there's a couple of drugs like that. They're also uh, approving for weight loss as well. Okay, so she has a new special that she's working on that's going to be released soon to talk about all this and weight loss challenges and um I don't know. So I guess it's just a couple of things with this here. So, you know, what do you think about using this drug to lose weight? Any problem with it or no? And um, I don't know, just, just thoughts thoughts in general of taking these sort of weight loss drugs to, to lose weight. So, Dina, you mentioned you looked into it, you know, not joking around, whatever. That's fine. Is that the yeah, I, 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 I did. So I, what, I, I do talk it. about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, think about it this way, guys. You have many drugs out there that started from one thing and the other. Um, Viagra was was being was it made to, for like heart conditions, and then mm -hmm. they realized it didn't do do what they wanted to in the heart, but it gave the people erection. <laughs> but that's and, not so bad either. Right. So yeah. they, honestly that's that's how it, they they found out that that it was for to to gain erections. Um was the clinical trials for it. Didn't do shit for the heart. I mean, you know, so you died, but you died with a fucking heart on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how that moved on. Um there's probably plenty Check of Check it drugs out, Aunt like Sue. <laughs> We're gonna have to let that coffin up a little bit. <laughs> Open casket, but only on the bottom. <laughs> I can't close the bottom half of this lid. Um. Yeah. So, if they go back through and do the 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 correct walkthrough and procedures to find out that it, hey, this can help with weight loss, and you do because they. All these um, diet, dietitians and 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 all these people that know what they're talking about about exercise diets, 
say there's no magic pill, but what if there was? Hmm. And and this is how we find out. Again, I'm not saying that this is this is the magic pill or this works or yada yada. But what if it is? What if what if we do figure it out? Why not? He's that? trying to get a sponsorship from Ozempic right now. Hey, that'd be great. Have to finally have to fucking be able to button my pants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Nick could be like Velcro. the Nick could be like the after <laughs> model well, on the show. Yep. See that's that's Brian. That's how, that's how I I know how uh, fat and disgusting I am is when they show these videos on TV like that. I look at the before picture and go, "That's not bad." I'm, <laughs> well, I'm okay yeah. with being the the before guy. Not yeah. bad. <laughs> not like, bad. Right. To be the before yeah. Dude, yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't know, Nick. What do you think about the all the the weight loss uh, drugs, uh, creed, uh, or etc. I, right now? I don't know. I, it. <laughs> You know, the worry obviously is that it it comes, it stems from a a place where mentally you're being told that you're not good enough the way you are, right? However, Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is, if you are innately unhappy with the way that you look and and, or unhealthy, or unhealthy, and and, and you would like to do something about that and make you feel good, get you on the right track. You know, I'm not I'm not against that uh, by any means because you only have one life to live, and you might as well live it being as happy with yourself and your surroundings as you possibly can. Um, but the yeah, the concern is just is health stuff. You know what I mean? Like you you worry that people are striving for uh, this level of being thin or in shape that is perhaps unattainable, or they don't understand what it takes to be healthy while maintaining. All this coming from the Captain Medium shirt here. <laughs> well, and it, you know, and just being it, always there's the, there's you know people with disorders and pe- people that are deathly thin and just pushing to be thinner and thinner and thinner and they're beating themselves up every time they eat something and you know what I mean. So mm. I don't think that's what Oprah's doing here by any means, uh, or you know, but that is the concern, right? So um, I definitely think that in moderation, if you're using something to live a healthier lifestyle or to be happier with yourself and you're okay with, you know, you have a goal in sight, you know what you want to get to, you know what you want to look like, and it's a healthy thing. I mean, more power to you, whatever helps you get there, right? I mean, people that want to uh, build muscle and stuff, I mean, yes, there are steroids and things, but there are healthy alternatives as well. Um, you know, people take protein and different dietary supplements, things to trim down, things to bulk up, um, you know, that are natural and healthy. So, like, that, that, that's fine. You can use things like that uh, and, you know, put in the work. So, as long as you're practicing, I think, safe habits uh, while using some of these drugs to, you know, <laughs> help you. I mean, it, it, that's the thing, right? You can take these things, but don't just burn fat, burn fat, or not eat, not eat. Like, mm-hmm. it's going to keep you from being hungry quicker. So, you know, do this. Still eat your meals. Still, you know, but now you're taking mm-hmm. in less. Now it's giving you more self-control that you may not have had on your own otherwise. So I don't really see a problem with it, Other, you know, as long as... You, you yeah, people can be trusted to, to treat themselves well and you be wouldn't. healthy. Listen, listen. You could go two routes. You could you could go the Oprah route where you take Ozempic, or you could go the Nick route and uh, and marry my sister who's a shitty cook. Either way, sure. you eat less and you, you become thinner. You know what's the most heartbreaking part? She's not a <laughs> shitty cook. She just doesn't. <laughs> and that's what's the saddest of all, because when she does cook, it's delicious, but she just doesn't very often, but that's okay. Hmm. Yeah. And I love to eat. That's, that's what, that's really, that is the, that is the irony of the whole thing that pisses me off about you, Nick. Is I've <laughs> seen you, to every time I've gone to eat with you, like when we used to go to the, that sushi bar, the, uh, oh, yeah. dude, yep. you'd put on a, on a clinic. clinic. Yeah. yeah. It's impressive. Trip hmm. after trip, full plates every time. And you, I mean, yeah, it, there wasn't, you had like stacks of plate, like, like a, like a Garfield cartoon after eating goddamn mm-hmm. lasagna yeah. all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I put away some sushi. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's something else. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Put that on my gravestone. Right. You can, you can put away some sushi. That's right. You can put That's away it. some sushi. Leave yep. the bottom part of my casket up and put that on my grass. <laughs> we're we're going to stack up all those plates, uh, um, all the sushi plates right next to the headstone. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so the coins. Do yeah. That. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, Brian, I what say I, you? I, I tend to agree with you guys. If you do it safely, that's great. And I, 
I do admire someone like Oprah who's come out and just said, "Hey, I'm using this stuff." And she I'm recognized Oprah. she's 140 or 340, she's 70 years old, mm-hmm. 70 Damn. years of age. Looks Damn, great. Yes. Yep. Um, well, but she recognizes certainly that she has a a large platform out there that she she can put a special out there and reach a lot of people, and is putting something like this out there to basically say it's okay. You know, it's okay that if you, if if you don't want to lose weight, you don't have to. You know, you know, be okay with who you are and everything. But if there's, you know, if there's health issues, you just want to look better. That you know, these are alternatives that you can try. And she talks openly about it, and you know, maybe educate some people, give some people some added uh, confidence, and makes them feel better about what they're pursuing. And you know, it's 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 a good thing here. So, you know. Yeah. Good for I mean, Oprah, and if people are saying that she's a fake and this and that, you know, get off her back and just hey, relax. You know, right. she's just trying to, she's not saying she's going to, it'd be different if she said, I'm using Weight Watchers and making right. money and from that, that and then taking the, that, yes. and then right. you find out yeah, later that she was lying the whole time and damages right. the Weight Watchers business while she's at it. That's right. what's King. happening here. Yeah. That you dude uh, used to eat the raw meat and say that he got so fucking jacked or whatever, what liver king or whatever. Right. <laughs> Turns out he was spending thousands upon thousands of dollars per year at steroids. <laughs> I mean, because when I look in this goddamn camera and I tell you I save money with Blake Insurance, I fucking mean it. Yes, sir. Blake Insurance is an Erie insurance agency located right here in Barberton, Ohio. They provide auto, home, renters, and business insurance with honesty decency and affordability this is the ones you want boys let me tell you erie insurance is above all else in service you want to call 234-571-5359 or visit blake insurance llc.com for your free five minute quote today that's right free and he minutes? ain't he ain't pulling your chain nick will mm-hmm. but aaron blake will not <laughs> I'll pull tell anything him he asked me the to. boys sent you there you go very good See, uh, I didn't even read it that time. I don't know if you noticed. I didn't even put on the glasses because oh, I nice. looked right Good. in the camera. Because you guys, I, I listened to eye this contact. episode. And you guys called me out. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, by the way, thanks again to your, your wonderful father for joining us last week. If you didn't listen to that episode, uh, check Boomer that Don. out. Yes. Boomer Don was Boomer great. Don. Yes. We got a, a, a scare from a, a national treasure here, guys. Richard Simmons has come out and said recently, scared people recently, that he said he was dying, kind of freaked people out, said he was dying on social media, and they had to come back and I am and dying it. to tell yeah. you about my new workout plan. <laughs> See, that would be something he might say. <laughs> but he had to come back and correct and, and clarify he's not dying. He has a treatable form of skin cancer. So It's just skin something... cancer, but it's treatable. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. I mean, the dude's been in the sun, probably tanning beds, I would assume. I mean, I don't, he's been... Didn't say. No, no, I'm saying is, is, is look at him from like 1983 till, I mean, he's out of the limelight, but he's mm-hmm. just mocha. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's the color of burnt sienna crayon. <laughs> yeah, they go change it to uh, uh, Richard Simmons color. I think something like that. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. His lips are devil red and his skin's the color of mocha. <laughs> <laughs> he will wear you out because. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I just don't want to get for any more comments necessarily from that. So just I'm glad he's okay. He scared sure. people. People are still, it says a lot of fans out there. I know we're fans of his. So. Did Glad you guys okay. happen to see the uh, the what was it a video short video short movie of Pauly Shore portraying Richard Simmons? We talked about that. But yeah, we an odd not fucking it. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's he's he's supposed to be doing like the short film or whatever of him biopic. Yeah, or something. it was uh, okay. it was interesting. Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's almost like a, it was like a fever. It felt like a fever dream. Like it was just like what like. There is, there is, you know, in the Venn diagram of Polly Shore and Richard Simmons, you see where like the crossovers oh, yeah. are, but it's very odd to know them both separately, but see them blurred into one was very strange. No. Yeah, that's all right. That's it. Move on. Okay. Sorry, Brian. All right. So more social media news out here, guys. There's a dating coach, Carla Elia, who's promoting sort of a 
older way of thinking in women dating men, women's place at home and that type of thing. So she's basically saying that a woman should not go out with a man just because he is nice or who treats her right, but one who can afford them. Right. So, um, She's saying, so the story here is it's a young woman. She's 24. She's part of a community of women who have gained popularity and notoriety online for their espousal on what can feel like antiquated dating guidance, right? So like a woman's place maybe is not working. Get out of those dead end jobs. Let a man take care of you. You know, that type of thing here. So, um, that's that's kind of the high level story here. So I guess getting into our asking idiot segment here, guys. So what do you think of this type of messaging for young women out there dating, not just looking for a nice person who's supportive, blah blah blah, but simply someone who can, you know, allow them to you know, just you know shop and you know, do whatever they want to do and just uh, quote, again quote unquote afford them. Yeah. Um, so, Nick, you had a couple of thoughts on this. So what, what do you I, think about this type of I dating agree. advice for young women out there? Go I ahead. agree wholeheartedly. I agree. They should take that uh, take that advice because, honestly, um, save the nice down-to-earth girls for the nice guys. Um, if, <laughs> if you're going to walk into that information and you feel sure. that... Uh, I, I shouldn't even say it like that because there's all different types of people in this world. As much as there are women out there who want to be taken care of and just have free time to go shopping and be a trophy wife, there are many men out there who want mm-hmm. to do that for you and can do that for you. Sure. Those people right. should definitely find each other. Brian does it but for me. <laughs> all the nice, normal, down-to-earth girls who are looking for a nice guy to treat them right are not going to listen to that shit. That's not what they're looking for. So leave... I mean, if that's fine. If you want to fall, if that's the advice that you're seeking out and that's kind of what you're looking for, follow that advice. Follow the blueprint. Find yourself a man who's going to afford you and be able to give you the life that you want or that you feel you deserve. Um, but uh, not dating a guy just because he's nice or treats you right um, is silly messaging. But that's coming from someone who seeks out a woman who is independent and strong minded and thinks for themselves and wants to and you're poor wants, so wants wants to be in a partnership that and I can't afford you I'm just sorry but um mm. that's you know what I'm saying like that's people will gravitate towards you know what they're already looking for I think so the nice down to earth girl who wants to you know find a nice guy to treat her well is not going to listen to that shit um they're going to go find a guy who chemistry is chemistry right Mm -hmm. if you're looking for somebody who makes you feel good that treats you right that you're looking to enter a life partnership with and be partners with truly you're going to find a nice guy who treats you right and you're not going to listen to that bs but if you are looking to be a trophy wife then you should follow that information because that's what you're after and as i said earlier Life's only so long. You should do whatever it is that makes you happy. If you want to just go shopping and have your guy out there busting ass and providing a life for you, there's somebody out there that wants to do that for you. Absolutely. It's not me, Mm -hmm. but uh, absolutely. That's a great point. Dean, what do you think? Um... Nick, you do have a point, but I think you're also missing the, the idea that, Brian, you said this woman is an influencer. Uh, no, she's uh, she's popular on social media, but she's a dating a dating coach. But yeah, she's an influencer. Yeah, okay. she has a lot so, of followers out there. So yeah. even if she's not like a quote unquote influencer on social media, she still has a job where young women listen to her. Yes, Nick, I get true. that. You know, if I'm out there looking for that, you should get. You know, you should go do that. Leave. That's fine and all dandy. But she's also going to talk to some of these girls that are um, easily. I don't want to say manipulated, but um, influence. influence, influence. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and they're going to hear this message, and it's going to set fucking women's lib back fucking thirty years. I mean, Good. women have have busted their ass in in this country I don't around like the how world. Your screen gave it a thumbs up when you said that, but that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah, I did not mean to do that. Get back there, make a sandwich. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, they're they're going to hear this, and 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 it, everything that a lot of these women 
all these women worked for for so many years, for hundreds of years now. And it's not even close to being where it should be with the equal pay and, and all of that. Um, so when you're not even at the mountaintop, you're going to try to drag fellow, fellow women back down so it takes longer? Hmm. She's a fucking idiot and should be called out for it. You should have your vagina revoked. That's right. Mm. Yeah. We're taking the glove oil away from you. <laughs> so I do agree, though. Messaging-wise, do I feel like it's good messaging? No. No, I don't. Um, that's you know, It's not good messaging, necessarily. Yeah. For if someone's on the fence, oh, what should I be looking for? Someone being like, you need to be looking for someone who can provide for you and not necessarily someone who's going to treat you well. No, that's not positive messaging. Not in my opinion, at least. Right. Um, thumbs down on that one. That's right. My screen is pretty impressive, unlike Dean's screen. Okay. <laughs> well, you Brian, let's say you, you, have, you have a lovely partner in, in this world and a young daughter as well. Mm -hmm. uh, both of those lovely ladies have had the benefit of finding wonderful men, might I say, that uh, treat them very well. So they are very fortunate. But what say you, Brian? Thank you, uh, sir, for saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I. Yeah, you both have great points. You know, as, as long as you're, if you are, I think it's bad messaging for women. No question about it. Uh, if you buy into that, whether you're influenced or it's just the way that you believe, you know, to Nick's point, just be open on, on, up front with your thoughts. It, when, when you first start, when you first meet a, a guy or a partner, and you, you should just announce, you know, when you, as you get to know that person, th these are my intentions. I don't want to work. I want to be taken care of. I want to uh, mind the home. I want to go out and do my thing, whatever, whatever. And if your partner is willing to support that, great. But yep. like you say, you found each other and That's good for you. Yep. Right. Yep. But See. if you think that way and you're not uh, forthright in your desires and then you, you know, the, 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 your partner goes into a relationship thinking it's going to be teamwork and, you know, shared income and this and that and the other, then you throw that out there that, oh, yeah, by the way, I want to quit and I want to stay home and all that. And yet that's not something that's been discussed. It's going to cause, of course, a lot of problems. That's in why I'm in a relationship. She said shared income, and I, and I misheard. Sure. <laughs> um, I told Peyton a long time ago, and I've said it before on the show, that, you know, one of the things I, I always told her as, as, a, as a young girl growing up is, you know, don't rely on a man to take care of you. you. You need to get an education. You need to acquire skills that will allow you to be able to support yourself. I hope that if you want to you have a that, partnership Peyton? with somebody. You don't, you don't need Joey. No, well, but she wants I mean, Joey because Joey's she, wonderful. That's the, see, that's the, that's the and point. And treats right? her well. And is a sweetheart. You don't need to be there because of income Nobody needs or Joey. something else. <laughs> we all need a little Joey. Yeah, she's <laughs> got it. <laughs> okay, really. No, but she, has enough, she has a degree. She has a job, so she could live on her own to be tighter money. Sure, but she's she doesn't need a partner right. to be able to survive in right. this world. She has enough yeah. skill to be able to do that, and that, and that's that's a good thing, right? So I, I'm of the like you guys believe it should be a partnership and. And all the way around, not only an income and just your beliefs and what you want to build together and everything else. And can I, and, can I say something to, to all our uh, uh, gentlemen uh, listeners sure. and viewers? Um, here's the deal. Uh, a way to avoid this, to a way, a way to, to really nip it at the bud, to find out, you know, if this girl, do what I do on your first date. Fuck, dude. You take, no, no, that's on the side. You know, you oh. on the first date, you take them to McDonald's and bring a bag to lunch because you ain't paying for ninety nine cents for a burger. Fuck that. You bring a bag to lunch, and then you, if she doesn't give you any money for it, you eat it in front of her. Teach her a lesson. Yeah. Mm. So I'm yeah, lonely, and guys. That's that's. A <laughs> <laughs> so, there you have it. Take it from us, ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, take awesome it from us. Advice from Three, us. Straight white males to tell you what you should be looking for out there. That's so right. We got we got you covered. We know how women should be treated, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially Dean. <deep. laughs> 
Yeah, we, the three of us, we feel fortunate every day that we have any women around, let alone yeah. wonderful women in our lives that are yeah. all very sweet and wonderful partners for all three of us. Uh, in, in, you know, so yeah, we're very, very fortunate. So, gentlemen, yeah. here's to yeah. our ladies having bad taste. That's ah, right. There you go. Here's to that. Here, here. Yes. Good cheer. Indeed. Okay, guys. Sure, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, good, uh, good opinions. All right, we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap up the second he- segment here and go into our. Uh, well, we're going to take a break first of all, <laughs> and come Let's back with our our final segment again. Art related. What is it? Uh, and Nick will tell you all about it when we return after the break. Well, hello, and welcome back to segment number three of Convincing Idiots. Of course, I am Millennial Nick, alongside Gen X Brian and Zenial Dean. You guys, you are joining us for the third and final segment of this lovely piece of audio artwork that we make here each and every week called Convincing Idiots. There are many forms of artwork uh, out there, and as much as we enjoy the sounds of our own voices, amongst many other things, uh, this week we're going to uh, pivot more towards the uh, visual side. We're going to be discussing our personal Mount Rushmore's of all-time favorite movie posters. So there's a lot mm-hmm. that goes into a movie poster. Now, you can be basing this off of many different factors. Could be a movie that you really love. Could just be it was a fine movie, but the artwork is striking or something that visually sticks with you or is mm-hmm. timeless. Mm-hmm. However you'd like to go about it, as we all know, gents, we are fucking idiots and our personal Mount Rushmore's are five heads. So uh, we'll go around right. here and five. talk about some of our favorite movie posters brian you've been around since the beginning of movie posters uh what is the first one his favorite are silent (laughs) (laughs) you've seen the ones that were etched onto cave drawings uh what is some of your favorite movie posters uh not necessarily in any order uh one of my earlier ones that i loved as a kid that got me instantly excited about this movie star wars Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. just yep, the iconic New Hope Star Wars movie poster, the famous, you know, with uh, Luke with a uh, lightsaber over his head. And it wasn't even the actors. It was like a, gr- a drawing or drawing of the actors. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. It's a beautiful painting. The Darth, the, the huge looming Darth Vader helmet behind him, and this, you know, the Death Star. And I the got a ships. looming Our, helmet for you. Yeah. <laughs> So just a just a great poster. It really got you excited and interested of what what the heck is this? And as we know, it just was a completely different movie at the time. And and you know, certainly we know what it became from there. So, but it's you know, the movie poster definitely hyped it up very very well. Yeah. I agree. It was also on my list. Yep, definitely yep. Uh, iconic. Absolutely, Dean. Oh, my turn. All right. Um, my number one, uh, or number one on my list, uh, Jaws, 1975. Mm, um, so I mean, it was it was like the first blockbuster. It's what created the blockbuster. Um, and other than that fantastic trailer that they, they put out there, it's an, it's an icon. I mean, it's so iconic. They do people do pop art of it. They do. Sure. Um, they parodied it with like cats and whatever animals they can. It's on mm-hmm. t-shirts. I mean, that poster is everywhere in one form or another. So mm-hmm. it not only did the movie transform uh, cinema and the way we uh, go and experience movies, but it also changed the way we look at movie posters. So that's why number one on my list is Jaws. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a great uh, my first submission is uh, this is just based solely off of the poster. Even as a young kid, it always was very striking to me. And this is not even necessarily, it's a fine movie, but this, this movie series is not even one that I'm necessarily a fan of, per se. They're fine. But uh, Halloween, 
the very first one. Mm, the, yes. I, the, the pumpkin. Pipe, mm. Next to the outline and the jagged outline of the, the, very you know, good. the pumpkin that is shown. Um, mm-hmm. Just really cool. I remember just as a kid kind of how that visually kind of messed with my head. It almost looked like a... Uh, you know, the the jaggedness of the outline of the pumpkin with the knife was just very striking and very cool. I almost had to look at it a little closer yeah. to recognize that, in right. fact, it was a knife alongside the the part shown in the light of a Again, of it's Jack so good Lantern. they put it on T-shirts everywhere. Yeah, and, yeah, it's absolutely. fantastic. Uh, you yeah. know, like I said, it, it's a fine movie, but I'm not a, I'm not a big horror uh, buff yeah, or anything are. like that. Um, oh, you said horror. Horror, Sorry. no, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Big horror, yeah, not a big horror buff. Um, but uh, they're fine movies, but yeah, that, that poster always <laughs> stuck with me, and I always just thought that was really very cool. So that paired, obviously, the, the music goes with it, but um, my dad had on cassette uh, the soundtrack for Halloween, and it had Ooh, the movie fun. poster on it, so that it was very cool. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that music is iconic, and as was the poster. So Halloween, Brian. It's yeah, that's one of the greatest horror movie posters of all time in my book mm-hmm. as well. So a also from back when I was when I was a kid. So Star Wars you know, introduced that whole universe, and another whole universe. Began with this movie poster, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the great mm-hmm. poster, the original one with Harrison Ford standing there in the middle with the whip, you know, right. ripping around him and all the scenes around him from the movie. Just a fantastic poster uh, that just introduced you to Indiana Jones. And again, just that whole. Uh, just, and you, you got there, the you, vibe. Exactly correct. Exactly correct. It, it captured that movie perfectly and just again great artwork and a great picture of uh, harrison ford as that character so yeah there you have it original raiders of the lost ark Mm -hmm. all right my number two on my list is from 1976 the iconic standing at the top of those stairs in philadelphia ladies and gentlemen rocky yeah great that poster again if if they can make a t-shirt out of it which you know that is an iconic scene yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, it's, it gave you again, like, like, uh, Raiders, uh, poster, it encapsulated, you know, that winning spirit. Like you feel that when you see that, you know, him standing at the top of those stairs on that poster. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with the winning spirit of Rocky, that is my number two. Yeah. As we know, that scene was so popular. The movie was so popular. They, they eventually built an actual statue of right. Rocky yep. on those. Very stairs, so right? So. They ended up moving it down to the bottom. <laughs> but, oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. The art museum goes, no, thank you. But, you know, you could have it down there. I mean, he wasn't real, so <laughs> let's just right. put it down there. Thanks. Like, calm down. I mean, the movie is a piece of art, so. Yeah. Nikolai? Uh, next on my list here, I have another horror movie, and this one I am a big fan of, and again, just a really visually striking one, The Thing, uh, starring mm. Kurt Russell. The Thing was that, a really a cool, just yep. the, the guy with the, you know, and yep. all the, just very, almost, the, the movie poster itself looks like it's in motion, being still. Like, it just yep. gives off that animation of movement of vibrance of something uh impactful happening uh and i was just thought that was really cool and i absolutely love that movie so uh the thing is on my list as well as far as movie posters excellent excellent uh very cool movie is that it is, I remember watching this movie for the first time in, in 1994 in the theater, and it was just a whole different feel and vibe to movies in general. I'm giving you an applaud. I know what it is. Yeah, the movie poster was terrific. The beautiful, gorgeous Uma Thurman mm-hmm. and Pulp Fiction. That movie poster just captured that movie's feel perfectly, like on an old like Pulp comic book cover yep. Yep. with five, the five cent cents or, or yep. whatever. Yeah, and just the tattered you know, freight edges and all that she just looks absolutely perfect laying on the bed on the phone or something like that and just you know with her feet up behind her just a great great picture i had that bought that poster back in the day and had it hanging up in our uh gemini's apartment back in its time for 
uh, you know, a long time had that displayed. So just a great post. I think I gave it to you, Dean. As a matter of fact, I think I gave it to you. If I'm not mistaken, that poster. But you did. Where is yeah. it? Yeah. Where is it? Um, is it hanging proudly it on your wall right now? No, I haven't. I do not have a. Uh, I do not have it up yet. But uh, yeah, I do have it. Very good. Okay. So great post. Disappointing. Good. Mm-hmm. The Pulp Fiction is one of those uh, that when you look at that poster, I know what that smells like. And again, sure. I'm not talking about Uma Thurman. I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm just talking about the no, you time. Never know what like, Uma, you will never know that smell. No, no, you never know what that is. But mm-hmm. it's just you know at that time period, like you have that certain smell in your life. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's just like a grimy, gritty. <laughs> it's odd that you say that. Smoky. And I think yeah. it's because of maybe the way the poster itself looks. Mm-hmm. Because I also agree with that, and I only feel Thank like you. I feel feel that way about Pulp Fiction. And I, the smell to me is a old VHS tape. Like I have yes, a tattered yes. old. Uh, VHS. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 1994. It's VHS sleeve. It smells it's like 1994 very, when you look and at I it. I don't know why yeah. that is, but I don't know if it's because the aesthetic of the poster itself is. The, it's made, to look, it's made to look worn, right? And, it's, and you it's remember like, what it was like back then, yeah. you know, when you first saw it. And, it's very and interesting. It. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that is that is a good point. Yeah, that's, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So my next one, uh, Brian, uh, kind of piggybacking off yours um, mm-hmm. because of, like, it, uh, again, everybody was so excited to see this sequel with Empire Strikes Back. You know, and then you see that poster of uh, with uh, Han and Leia right there holding each other, with Vader again yeah. looming in the background, and you have the all the little different scenes. Um, yeah, Luke on the you Luke know. on the Tauntaun, and yeah. then you have Cloud City and the Lando's there. So you have a new character they're introducing. And, and back then, you know, you got to think a lot of these movie posters. Um, that's what you got from the movie. You, you know of the movie or whatnot, mm-hmm. but you know you have to look and go. Oh shit! What is that clouds? Where you know you didn't call it Cloud City. You, you whatever that thing is right there. What is that? You know, sure. And what what is Luke writing? And I mean, a lot of these posters is what sold you because you had three channels. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you saw the the previews on a regular basis like we do now. So yeah. those posters sold you in something like that, where it gives you a glimpse of of these new characters, of these and 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 a new way of looking at the old characters from this from the other movie, really got you excited. So yeah. Empire Strikes Back is uh, yeah. my That's a great number one. three. Yeah. yeah, beautiful painting. Yep, yep. Okay. Guys, I I had every intention. Uh, going into this evening of including this one for me and, and, and saying mm-hmm. jingle all the way and putting mm-hmm. that on my list and talking about, you know, and, and adding it to my Mount Rushmore. Uh, but I must forego it uh, for for the true greatness of movie poster that is Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. Uh, it's I just yeah. with the mm-hmm. eye, yeah. the glowing eye yeah. and the mm-hmm. gun and the it's just... There again, if the movie had sucked and it wasn't this cultural phenomenon, it would not. It would just be another movie poster. But it has that weight to it. Like it, it has that power because of what it was and what a great story it was. Um, I love the Terminator. Actually, I, also, I, I could you could argue with me between the Terminator and T two Judgment Day. I personally, right, it's on my list. Like I, I need, I need that. Po- I need a T two poster of him on the motorcycle with the right. shotgun mm. over his shoulder you know with the glasses on on the with the leather jacket on the motorcycle great picture but like i said you could argue either one of them truly sure. uh with the, the either the terminator or the t2 judgment day both great posters but i'm going to go ahead and let them both wear the crown on this one and just say those first two terminator movies that i'll i'll say the terminator to to uh stick with the with the og but the terminator movie poster was fantastic as great as and as great as jingle all the ways poster was you know he's got the uh, the face you know he can't believe he forgot turbo man and you know little jamie's looking up at him with the turbo man it's just it's great it it really lays out the plot of the movie it's fantastic but i will say i will i will secede that poster uh just this once to the terminator Two things. One, I'm impressed that you got in a plug for Jingle all the way without putting it on your Mount Rushmore. And two, I can make the argument that you could put just 
Arnold Schwarzenegger's face on this Mount Rushmore because if if you think about yeah. it, think Thomas of a movie Predator. he was in that Predator was awesome yeah. with that He's the, the yeah. green digital look mm-hmm. to it. Um, yep. Running mm-hmm. Man was fucking amazing. Sure. Sure. So I could uh, argue, Con- see, yeah. there you go. I could yeah. argue that, that a face could be just Arnold Schwarzenegger representing all of his movies. So sure, yeah, there absolutely. You go. Yeah. Brian, what do you got? Good one. I have a couple overlaps here. So Dean also had Jaws. Okay. So so yeah, just everything you said about it already. I remember I. A, a movie poster that that poster was so like like you said you're in the seventies it was everywhere. I, yeah. I recall I have a Mad magazine cover with the the shark is there and inside the mouth of the shark is Alfred e. Newman like steering like an old ship with a captain's yeah. hat yeah. you know facing the woman and everything. I remember it, it, Pink Panther it was parodied and uh, at the beginning of a Pink Panther movie the Pink Panther was flying up to you know like the shark to eat Cluzo it just. That shark, that picture of that shark, and it, it was it, it. It's hard to say there's a more perfect movie poster than, right. than that one in this yeah. time. So absolutely, and the sheer size it. of it too. That's one one of the cool right, the scale right. of it yeah. because of that woman's you know swimming at yep. the top and the size of that. You can't even see the whole thing. You know, say that like her feet dangling, her yeah. arms dangling, just yeah. the fear that you have. Of sure. Like, you don't. She has no clue what's under there coming up. Yeah, it, yeah it's the impending whole doom. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's like it. when people go to hit play for this uh, this podcast. <laughs> That's right. Pending you have doom. no idea what's under the surface. That's it's right. just the tip of the fucking iceberg. You don't even know. That's right. Mm-hmm. You get a whole bit about cum hands. All right. <laughs> so my number four is from 1973, and again, iconic. I've seen it on T-shirts. I've seen it on bags, um, on buttons, and yada yada. But it, it it definitely gives you the fear of the exorcism that's coming. Mm. So Great the one. Exorcist from 1973 is my iconic picture. Him with the light, it, you know, it's the beautiful the lighting shot. of of the the priest walking up those stairs. Mm. Um, and you, you, we, I said about Pulp Fiction about the smell. You can hear that poster. Yes, you hear that that Exorcist theme. Lightly, hauntingly, in the background as he's walking up those stairs. It's fantastic. So the, the poster is actually standing in front of the house. He's actually walking up to the house, and he's kind of looking up at the window with the light out front and everything like that. But right, it, right. Is, okay. it is that. That's okay. But, but there's that stairs in front he's of walking, him. Uh, he's walking up to the house before he goes in. He pauses. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah. Exorcist, 1973. Nikolai. Uh, this is, uh, kind of akin to the whole pulp, the pulp fiction thing. Uh, very nineties movie to me and always very striking. Absolutely adore this movie. The crow, uh, just the simple, Mm. the black on both sides with the thin white opening and the silhouette of him walking through. Uh, I absolutely love that movie. Um, and I love that. I used to have that poster actually in my room, uh, as a, as a youth as a young teen Nick, uh, my little loft bedroom in the attic of our house, I have sure. a crow poster up on the wall. And, um, yeah, I just absolutely love it. There's something so... You guys have both seen The Crow, right? It's just the... Yeah. No. the uh, you have not seen The Crow? I've never seen The Crow. Oh, my oh, God. Man. Oh, shit. Hmm. Oh, man. Backyard movie night. Oh, fuck. Yeah, all right. Sure. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm game yeah. for it. Um yeah, but it's just like when he, you know, the whole coming back to life thing, and it just that him just it gives you that appearance of him through the darkness, just that gleam of light in him entering through is very uh, ominous and cool. I just always, you know, thought that was very cool. So I love that movie. That's a personal favorite of mine, and I've always loved that movie poster. So The Crow is on my list as well. Nice. Brian? Very good. We overlapped with Dean, and I'm mm-hmm. overlapped with Nick on the thing. So you everything you said about that poster, Nick, is exactly right. It just there's it just gives you the there's there's something terrible happening. You get the immediate sense, you know, something in the Arctic. You don't know what's going on. Like I said, just that the brightness coming out of the you don't see the face of the yep. of the of the human. Something right. is happening, something something's going on. So it's super intriguing, just beautiful art. Is that the human or is that the thing? What is that? Exactly. I gotta go see it. 
yeah, again, great, great poster, and that rounds out my my five. Nice. All right. My no- last number five um, is a very um, '80s iconic movie uh, poster. Um, it is from nineteen, uh, I think eighty-five. I, I actually didn't put that write that date down. Um, eighty-four, eighty-five. But it is uh, the platoon. It is the iconic shot of <clears throat> of uh, 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 Bert, uh, uh, Tom Berenger. Or not Tom Berenger. It, it was um, uh, 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 Willem Dafoe standing, kneeling in the field, being um, shot as he's yeah. running towards the helicopter. And they, you know, and they kind of blurred him, silhouette him type deal out. Like it, you can't see that's Willem Dafoe. Also, his head's back and his arms up in, in like almost a prayer thing. And but the scene's him being shot all over from from the enemy and. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely it definitely is a striking poster, especially when you know what that you know what's happening. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that, that always uh, got there for me. So, platoon uh, was is my rounded out last number five. Nice. Uh, for my number five, so I did double up uh, with Brian on A New Hope, but um, I'm going to go ahead and throw one of my honorable mentions in its place. I uh, mm-hmm. can't leave a Star Wars one off the board, and this is not the best Star Wars movie. However, the teaser poster for it was mm. fantastic. Episode 1, yes. young Anakin, young Adam's. little Jake Lloyd as Anakin yep. Skywalker the walking shadow. next to a building in Tatooine and the shadow on the wall is the caped Darth Vader. It's just very cool. I remember, I think I got chills when I first saw it when I was a kid. Oh yeah. And you know, growing up since and you know, before these were coming out, that was the first teaser poster for episode mm-hmm. one the phantom menace and it was just the perfect. coolest fucking thing great perfectly done the movie left some things <laughs> that you may have yeah, wished different yeah. but uh it's the post, the teaser back poster in theaters this May. i saw yeah they're re-releasing all of them yeah uh, uh, leading up 30th yeah. anniversary for yeah. something i'm not yeah. opposed to going to see it in the theater guys sure yeah that'd be fun yeah yeah but uh, yeah, I, I love the way that that was done. I just thought it was brilliant and uh, very cool. Like I said, not one of the iconic original three Star Wars movies, but, but the, uh, certainly agree as that. far as the poster goes and the visual of that, very cool. So I would I would be willing to put that one on my on my Mount Rushmore. Very good. I think it's twenty fifth year or twentieth twentieth or twenty fifth. Anyways, anyways, good. Twenty fifth because it came out in ninety twenty fifth. So yeah, there you have it. Right. Twenty five. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. yep. Uh, do you have honorable mentions? I do. Me? Okay. You want to rattle them off or go go around? Um, we, we can rattle them off. Okay. Um, Phantom Menace was number one of my honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Full Metal Jacket with that helmet and the peace sign with the war as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, the Usual Suspects. All those guys lined up in the lineup. Good one. Um, and then again, I overlapped uh, with you with Pulp Fiction, my finable honorable mention. There you go. Nick, what do you got? Uh, I've mentioned a lot of mine already. I, episode one originally was one. Uh, Jingle All the Way obviously would have been on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I also have Alien. Uh, Alien was a great Alien. one. Just Ooh, I love the simplicity yeah, the of it. The egg yeah. and the green, yep. Something's you know, happening. neon yeah. oozing. Yep. Similar mm-hmm. to the thing. You don't really know. I mean, it's not as animated. It's almost like if you took the thing and the crow and mashed them together. It's the simplicity and the, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of ominous thing. Um, I'll crash, and I crash my thing into a crow. <laughs> and, uh, what else did I have? Um, oh, you know, another one I was going to throw out. Not super huge fan of this movie. It's kind of been played up a lot. It's a super huge, iconic movie. But for the... Uh, the legacy of it and the poster is immediately recognizable by anyone who's ever sold you weed out of their house. Scarface. Scarface has a great oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, movie yeah, yeah, poster. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good one. Brian? Uh, this is more repeats on my honorable mention. I had to have some James Bond in here, guys. I love the James Bond franchise. From Russia with Love, this is a uh, Sean Connery and a you know, iconic James Bond pose, you know, with the gun and the women behind him. Great, great uh, Bond poster. Another horror movie. 
the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Great, great poster. Mm, yeah. The girl's lying is... in bed and just the claws are coming yeah. out over top of her. Just terrific yeah. artwork. It gets you, you know, that really is a nice uh, synopsis Arouse. of that movie. Oh, yeah. Sure. Or Rouse. We could have mm-hmm. Rouse you as well. Yep. Sure. I also had Halloween. I also had The Exorcist. I also had Empire Strikes Back. I also had Alien, Phantom Menace, uh, Silence of the Lambs. The the mm, great uh, that's you know, a good one. Butterfly, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the Death Moth, the you know, Death yeah, Moth, yeah, Jodie yeah. Foster. No, it's okay. Yep. Great one. Um, Clockwork Orange. Sure. Yeah. Yep. You know, the, Michael McDowell is the, is the right. You know, with he's got he has a cane coming out at you, and he's got the whole. You could just tell he's yep. just the evil dude. You know, great uh, picture. Uh, Back to the Future. Great one. The, with the, the, the watch. Yeah, you know, the watch. Is that that one. Car, yep. Just just a great one. Another bomb. Then you might argue the, the sequel when you have Doc Brown behind him doing the same That's thing. That's a great one. It's mimicking the, the first mm-hmm. one. And the third one, the same type of pose, and then they right. were in the Western clothes. So just that 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 picture of Michael J. Fox with the watch, with the vest yep. and everything, that really that's you know, that spell that's that movie, uh and just in that picture alone. And see so for your eyes only for the great Roger Moore, James Bond. I have that poster still hanging up to this day in my stairway. Is it the greatest Bond poster of all? No, but it's my favorite Bond and Roger Moore. He's standing there with a gun and just has the close up of the of a woman standing there with beautiful long legs holding a crossbow. And through her legs from behind is, you know, Roger Moore with a gun. Just great shot. And simple. If we could, if you and I can recreate what? that poster, sure, could. that'd be that'd be terrific. Absolutely, absolutely. We we'll have Nick standing there with the high heels, <laughs> some fishnets he or already, something. He already wears yeah. yeah, yeah. And just the simplicity of this poster is makes it. You know, is, is, again, just seeing the poster itself was intriguing back in its time. It's like, what is this movie? I am interested, as a matter of fact, we're planning to go see the newest uh, version of this uh, newest uh, movie or mm-hmm. of, of this franchise uh, this weekend here, Ghostbusters. The original Ghostbusters, just a very simple black with the Ghostbusters symbol. That's all it was. Ghostbusters, just a fantastic logo, one of the best, probably one of the best logos of any uh, movie franchise that, ever, that there right. ever was. So simple and to the point. Great poster, and there's many, many more I could name, but uh, those were those were a bunch of my honorable mentions here. One guys. I so, was thinking of as we were talking that I'll just I'll give you a superhero one here, uh, and th- there again, this poster may not mean as much if the movie's not so goddamn incredible. But the Dark Knight, just the up, mm. the looking up at Batman with the, you know, the uh, burnt bat. in bat yeah. logo into the building behind him, very cool. I, mean, I don't think that I don't think that poster's as Gripping and Michael and holds Keaton his one with the, with the yellow, not so just the logo. Yeah, the Michael yeah. Keaton one with just the right. logo was fabulous. Yeah, you know what? That was so the, so hyped up to see that movie. Just that just that logo alone. Because yeah, it's like, like oh, this is like a real life. Yes. Batman's coming finally. Yeah. yeah. Um. W- while we were talking, the the one that popped in my mind, uh, Twister, with the giant oh, tornado yeah. coming, and and Bill Paxton. And her running, you know, you know, they're just like, you know, that big compared to the Twister, but like them running from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which did you guys know that there's they're doing a sequel? I think it comes out this year. Called yes. Twisters. Right. Mm. Yep. Yeah. There's two of them. And so, I did but, see, and I forgot to mention I, again, and we can talk about this poster if you want, just because we're bringing it up. Beetlejuice two. I just uh, saw yeah. the, the first ta- teaser trailer for it today. Uh, you can see them in their in their first pictures of them in their oh, current roles it. are out there. Yes. Yeah. What? Well, the reason they put those out is because they're both of those pictures are in the trailer. Oh, okay. But it opens yeah. with uh, Jenna Ortega. So <laughs> there we go. Everybody looks uh, great. Dean's favorite fifteen year old girl. Yeah, fifteen, motherfucker. <laughs> the older. <laughs> so we, we talked about it's like we 70. Talked to... <laughs> seventeen. <laughs> We talked a little bit about it already, guys. Like I'm you. just curious. Well, we have a, a couple of minutes to just. What are the elements like? What makes a good movie? 
poster. Hmm. So what are some elements in a good, solid movie poster? It's got to have Jenna so, Ortega on it. That's, that's <laughs> a, always a good one. Sure. I, I think, because we're all over the map here, there's some that we like because, you know, it's just a great visual. Some, mm-hmm. it's because it what it means to the movie. Uh, but I think a lot of what, is, what it comes down to, creativity. Right. Mm -hmm. So like the Halloween one was the first one I thought of because it was creative. It's not it's Mm -hmm. simplistic, but it's also creative. The thing was also creative just in the way that it looks and it it was visually stunning as well. So there you've got visually stunning and simplistic, but creative all the same. I think creativity is kind of the the main the main thing, something that I don't know anything that draws your attention, really. But creativity, I I think, steers the boat. Okay, Dean, I, I said it earlier. Uh, beyond creativity, it is the idea that starting with the, you know, back in the whatever, 60s, 50s, whatever, they, you started putting posters outside the theater, that's how they drew you in. Yeah, sure. So it had to yeah, be... Yeah, you didn't have trailers and stuff necessarily. It's just like, here's right. what you have to go off of. Does this right. so, piece so of it, art hang so on the wall look interesting? So it had to be captivating to right off the bat. It had, to get, mm-hmm. it had to lure you in with just a picture. So right. I, I yeah. think you know the the creativity is part of it, but it's also um, it needs to tell a story. Yeah, very quickly with that you know with that picture. So yeah, I'm with you. I don't like the movie posters that has like the all the frames or so many scenes of the movie and this right. and that. Nope. Too much. If you have to yeah. do that on the movie poster, it's probably not the best movie. Right. A lot of the superhero movies do that, like the Marvel Universe one. It's like it's like multiple. Every fucking character is on the post. It's like it's a lot. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just a lot going on. Right. Don't need all we, that. We get it. We'll see it when we get in there. Relax. Right. Be creative. Think about it. Come on. You're right. And you think about these all. I think all the ones that we said, most of the. I don't know. I don't know if we said a movie that was more recent than twenty some years. Plus, I don't know that anybody had a movie that's more recent than that, really. If you think right. about that, yeah, it's time, that you. and it's time. These are all pre-internet. You can't watch the trailer online, right? right. You have to catch the trailer on television if it, if it even had one, right? So it's just the whole word of mouth. And it's you think about the, the, the ads in the paper, the ads in the paper, typically right. had a picture of the movie poster, right? right. So if you were yeah. trying to figure out what, what movie to see, that picture, as you guys said here, had to create instant attention and attraction Daily, to make they you would, They would put out a, a, a giant piece of paper with, it was almost like a book it had, and it had different stories on them. Mm-hmm. Um, almost like a web page, what they kind of? Yeah, kind of. Like but a web well, page? Like physical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and in there is where you'd see those. It was almost like you Googled. So movie. like an iPad. You just a, li- a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's what a newspaper is. Sorry, real, Brian, go real, ahead. real quick. Shout out. I know this <laughs> is <laughs> like we're we're kind of but like as we're on the topic of Star Wars, real quick shout out to the uh the VHS release of the original trilogy. If you guys had those box sets with the oh, half faces uh, good. like Vader Yep. Uh, Stormtrooper yeah, Yoda good. on one, two, and three, and then below there was a little scene. Um, right. Those were cool. I doubt we're going to do our Mount Rushmore's of favorite VHS release covers, so I'm right. just going to throw that in now. All right. I you appreciate know. that. Yeah, yeah. Just real fast here. What's the most recent movie poster that you could think of that you like? One. Go ahead. Uh, Into the Spider Verse. The the Miles Morales going. Uh, he's actually as was he going right side up into the buildings are upside down behind him like he looks right side up but he's falling down words into the the buildings are coming in from above or whatever like he's it's a reverse like you know what i'm talking about like he's falling yeah. into the cityscape um that was very cool to me it's, and again it's kind of simplistic it's just miles and the background of new york and he's it just was kind of a cool visual um but i'd say as in recent you know, memory that was kind of one of those ones that kind of stuck out to me. But I, I don't know if there's been. I a don't ton. even know. I'm I'm sitting here trying to think. Uh, Multiverse of Madness, I guess, was was pretty cool. But again, it hadn't, like you guys said, it had yeah. the tiny little scenes of everything else. So yeah. It, but also, given what the, disqualify how, it, it's just you right. know, it, it's the trend. But it visually was cool, and I, yeah, I can't. Damn, I can't think of it. 
much of anything. Again, yep. it, and unless these days, unless you're walking by the theater, leaving it or, or going in, um, you don't see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I can't think of a more recent one that I thought that that's exceptionally interesting or cool. I just can't. Right. It's probably out there. I, I just can't think of it because it's just how things have changed. You know, because you yeah. know we're watching yeah. we're watching the trailers now, right? We're watching the sure. the trailers online or something like that. And yeah, most of the time you and, breeze right past the the. I mean, you, you know, the posters. Right. You're not really paying that much attention. Yeah. Hmm. That's I don't good. Know. Didn't even really think about it that way. Hmm. No, right. I have to think about that. Maybe mm. if, if one pops up, we could we could mention it in another episode or something like that. So, sure. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah, on all the elements, I agree with everything you said. By the way, all the elements had that, that uh, a good movie poster. I agree with what you guys are saying. So, good stuff. Well, we're pretty it's smart, a smart so. move to agree yeah. with us. Yeah. Another sure. smart move right. is to go ahead and move along into the future with the rest of your friends. Are you still riding a boring, plain, old bike? Well, perhaps you should update your life. Mm -hmm. Go green. Get yourself an electric bike. And what better place to find an electric bike than our friends at RPM Bike Shop. They are located locally, not too far from here, in Carrollton, Ohio. All you have to do is search them up on Facebook, RPM Bike Shop, or go to their website, rpmbikeshop.com. If you think that they're just bots and not real people, I challenge you to give them a call today at 330-808-7792 today to talk to one of their lovely sales associates to see how they can hook you up with the finest, smoothest, and most electrical ride of your life on an electric bike from RPM Bike Shop today. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll mention Nick already touched on it earlier at the very beginning, but... uh, you know, our friends at uh, Golden Art Tattoo moving into the new location. We're very excited for them as they you know, have an official new name. We know ideas that they're thinking of, but it's not official. Official. We'll share that later. But in the meantime, you can find them uh, on Facebook still, I believe, at Golden Heart Norton and give them a call. That's the best thing to do right now. Just call them 234 706 2982. And they'll be happy to schedule you in their new fantastic location in wonderful downtown, historic Wadsworth, Ohio. Get yourself a tattoo and walk right next door and check out the excellent beer at uh, Wadsworth Brewing Company while you're at it. Free plug. There you go. There you go. There you go. go. Perfect. All right. That's it. Gentlemen, we have done it. We did it. Just like this, like a great movie. A great ending, a great epilogue. I'd call it a happy ending. Uh, sure, mm-hmm. some would do that. Absolutely. Nick, you want to take us out, please, sir? Absolutely. Well, for the happiest of endings and the happiest of places on the internet, you spit your well, that hand would, before you do that. That would be all the ones in which we are on. So you can find us on all your favorite social media accounts uh, by doing doing so. Would simply uh, inquire you. With, uh, that's I'm using the wrong words. It's getting late in the show. I'm very tired. <laughs> uh, <laughs> doing so is very easy. It only requires you to go to Google and type in Convincing Idiots Linktree, not WordPress. Linktree. I am very tired. Uh, <laughs> L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E. You know the drill. No one's listening at this point in the show anyway. Uh, go, to, go find us on all your favorite social media accounts and do all the things all the kids do, like the button, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, and also you can find that information and so much more on our website. That's convincingidiots.wordpress.com. Convincingidiots.linktree.com <laughs> backslash golden heart tattoo like forward slash RPM bike shop. It is convincingidiots.wordpress.com. Uh, so we appreciate your support. And for this episode of Convincing Idiots, I'm Millennial Nick. Samuel Dean. Jedex Brian. Have we convinced you to come back for another fine piece of audio artwork next week on Convincing Idiots. I promise it'll have a smoother outro. (laughs) Hey there, if you like that video, or if you just like to watch us make fools of ourselves, please like and subscribe to this channel. We really appreciate it, and we hope to see you back here.
pauses here. I misread this story. We're going to cut this out because I misread this. And I said earlier that Reels was being sued. That's not the case. Her name is Real. I missed that. I apologize. Uh, Jesus Christ. That's okay. So my do question some fucking is research, completely... Brian. We ask one thing of you to come up with the entire show on your own. God damn, can't I know. do that. I know. So there's another. There's another story <laughs> here we can talk he's about. He's reading it. He just can't read it correctly.